that this is x transpose lx. So the meaning of x transpose lx is this. So we want to minimize this. Some, somehow we want to minimize this energy. So note that x is unit vector since it's since it is eigenvector. So sigma xi2 is 1. Also, x is orthogonal to first eigenvector. It means that uh, the first eigenvector is 1, 1, 1. And then orthogonal to that, it means that the sum of xi is equal to 0. So when I say lambda 2 is a minimum of, of that, it means that we have proved that this is xi minus xj squared over sigma xi squared. And I've just said that this is 1. So this one is equal to minimum of xi minus xj squared. i and j is inside e. So we want to minimize the number of crossing edges. So we, if you have uh, And you have some some graph here and some graph here, and so uh, they have, have a weak connections between them. So, for example, one or two, and uh, so we want to balance to minimize that. Uh, so I said that lambda two is is the minimum of all crossings. So we want to minimize the number of crossing edges, the number of edges which is crossing. So this is the way to balance, because if x is here, xj is here, xi is here, uh, we have shown that xi squared is 1 and xi is 0. From this, we, it says that some of them should be positive, some of them should be negative. So, by, so the second eigenvalue has a very interesting meaning. It means that it is the, it is it tries to minimize the number of crossing edges. And uh, now that you know all the definitions and concepts, let's do the final action. This is called spectral clustering. And I do it in three stages. First, you construct matrix representation graph and your adjacency is C plus C transpose and uh, your Laplacian is D minus W. Of course, C, you know it if you have seen my lectures on subspace clustering. You calculate C using ADMM. And, uh, and you form the Laplacian. And secondly, you calculate the eigenvalue and eigenvectors. So map each point to a lower dimensional representation based on one or more eigenvectors. So you have lambda 2 and x2. x2 is second eigenvector, eigenvector. For example, this is like uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, minus 0 0.3, minus 0 0.3, minus 6. And in the third, it is the grouping. It means assign points to two or more clusters based on our new representation. It means that x2, this is the second eigenvector, you can group it into a and b by just dividing them. So these are positive, these are negative. So we separate the nodes. That's why it looks like this, a and this is b, this is A and this is B, and you have some nodes, some edges between. And uh, so if you just rank in X2, 
and the value of x2 entries of this vector, you will see that it, it becomes like this. And suddenly you have a change in the uh, values of the entries of the vector of the of the second eigenvector and from this you can separate them so knowing the second eigenvalue and eigenvector is enough and uh, so in other words uh, you just separate it by second eigenvector but you may ask what if you have uh, four different cluster one cluster second cluster and then and then uh, four clusters because I have only four colors and then they have some weak connections between them some very weak connections so how how do you deal with this case that we have four cases so we cannot separate so one naive approach is that uh, for a and b you put it a1 and a2 and then separate it by b1 and b2 so you first uh, for the second eigenvector using the second eigenvector you cut this and you cut again inside them so this is this is a this is uh, this is b and then you cut again so this is a1 this is a2 so this is b1 you cut again b2 this is a naive approach so so only second eigenvector is enough, but people do research on higher order Cheeger inequalities. In other words, we have two approaches. The first naive approach, which I've mentioned, is recursive by partitioning. By people like uh, Hagen 92, and it is unstable, so don't use it very much. It is a naive approach. But the second approach is cluster, cluster, multiple eigenvectors. So she, Malik, in 2000, and in it is a, so in after 2018 we have a huge number of articles and this second approach which is much more stable and mature because it used higher order degrees higher order Cheeger inequalities and it is uh, more mature so i highly recommend to use the second approach so use uh, second, you use second eigenvector, but now use the third eigenvector, the fourth eigenvector. And of course, these are their eigenvalues. So you use all of these informations in order to do clustering. So sparse subspace clustering clustering uh, so I first I did ADMM to calculate C and then uh, I said okay I know C I create an adjacency matrix so that uh, the spectral clustering algorithm can can work on that so spectral clustering apply it is applied on, on W and gives me the partitions. So you have some K planes corresponding to K different clusters. For example, just two cluster. 
So your data is uh, on cluster A and on cluster B. And they have a, the degree between them is, for example, very perfect, 90 degree, very perfect. And, uh, and now uh, the graph, the red, uh, I mean, you can, you can see it as a graph. For example, the points on one of these graphs, so this is cluster A corresponding to subspace A, and you have you have graph B corresponding to subspace B, and then they have some weak connections because they may have uh, they may have intersection. So their intersection of two plane is a line. So they may have some intersection and this intersection is exactly the edges between these, these two these two clusters. So you have seen how graph theory is related to uh, machine learning and uh, subspace clustering. You have seen how subspace clustering is related to Nystrom approximation. You have seen how subspace clustering is related to sketching. I told you how using ADMM to calculate uh, C matrix is a kind of naive sketching. And you have seen that uh, uh, the geometric intuition of all these concepts uh, are so beautiful. But uh, I, sh I should mention that graph theory and, and graph theory in my lectures, unfortunately, you have seen that graph theory is just a result. First, you should calculate C, and then you go to graph theory, spectral graph theory. And um, most machine learning researchers doing it in a separately, but exactly for the same argument that geometry is a result, for example, people talk about manifold regularization. A geometry is just a result. What you do creates some geometry. So, so they are just decoupled. And you cannot use geometry to understand some analysis. First, you should do some analysis. You should do some functional analysis. And the geometry is just a result. But it is wrong to go from geometry and say, okay, what was my analysis? We should go quite the opposite way. 